Because that's it. Wow, so great. We did a selfie for my daughter in the backstage area. She's going to be crazy. But you, you didn't say that you took it from our caves. Yes, actually, we, we, we did a selfie of our, of our um, um, legs, right? I mean, he his just legs and mine. I, I cover my legs up a little bit for obvious reasons. Yes. So um, how is it like um, being out of like the professional training, like the day-to-day -day training? Is that, do, you, do you feel that? I, I, I recently uh, met, um, um, what is, was the name of your goalkeeper back then? In, uh, in Jens Lehmann? No, no, the other one. Oliver Kahn. That. Oliver Kahn, yes. He gained a little bit, right? <laughs> Yeah, he put on some weight for sure. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is actually isn't isn't that disturbing that uh, you know, like you quit two years ago and people already s forget about you? Is that is that was it hard for you that tr transition that the people are not recognizing you everywhere and don't want to like follow you wherever you go? Uh, it's not really the case. So especially in Berlin where I live and I used to play for almost ten years, uh, people still recognize me. And uh, sometimes it's, it's very nice, sometimes it's not that nice, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, the, the transition time is not easy, this is what yes. I have to say, because you play professionally and you, you just do the soccer, all of a sudden you're just like there and, and have to think about what, what doing next. And uh, I stopped playing soccer because of my herniated disc, mm. and uh, so instantly I just asked myself, what can I do now? Because my whole life I just played soccer, and then it's not easy to find something new. And uh, I have a very good manager and, and good friend of mine. He, he just told me, okay, just try out as many things as you can do. So I was like, well, I'm still assistant coach of the under 18 years uh, yes. national team. Uh, I, I did uh, commentary stuff in, in America and for Chinese Tell media, but yes. I can't speak Chinese, so <laughs> this is uh, for sure. And so I think it's always very, very helpful if you, if you try out things. So your whole life was like building up to become like that professional soccer player and all of a sudden like uh, all of a sudden like you have a huge like change a huge transition and so you didn't have a master plan for that no because no. first of all I, I wanted to play one or two years longer yes. so my last my last station was in, in America and I really enjoyed the time there and then if you just uh, if you just I have to think about what what doing next it's it's not easy especially if you have back pain as I as I had mm -hmm. in the past and, but as I said, I just tried out as many things as I can, and uh, so then on that way, you, you finally know what, what you want to do. Let's talk about success. I mean, becoming a member of the German national soccer team, that is, that is uh, that, that's amazing, this is incredible. So what, what drives success? Is it the daily routine of going out there on the field, train hard every day? Is it a physical issue or is it also like psychology? No, first, especially in Germany, uh, children wants to play soccer and this was my original intention too. So I just started playing soccer because I wanted to. And then as you grow and as, as you recognize that you're really talented, then pressure rises. And I think this is a big factor in soccer as well because of the money that's in, in soccer nowadays. We have a lot of pressure to deal with, and especially if you play World Cups, and uh, I play two, um, you really get experience about that. And uh, I don't know, sometimes you have to go to deep valleys, and uh, on the other time you, you're just like on top of the mountain and you really have to deal with it. And I'm really, really happy and glad that I made these experiences, uh, as well as the, the, the lower ones. How do you deal with pressure when you know like every eyeball of the nation is just focused on you? How do you deal with criticism? Sometimes it's just uh, you have to make the experience. So my, my first World Cup was in 2006 in Germany and uh, it didn't really start well for me. For Germany, yes, but not for me because after the first game against Costa Rica, um, the, the press and the people blamed me because we, we got two goals and so they blamed me that it was my mistake. And uh, you can imagine if one billion people watch the, watch the opening game in, in Munich, uh, it's not really, really nice if everybody tells you that you're really, really a mistake in the, in the lineup. But uh, first of all, I had good friends and I had a focus. So I had my, my, my goal, my aim, and I just wanted to play. I just wanted to, to perform best. And if pressure occurs and this happens, you have to find a way. And my way was just like to, to be aware of what's really important in life. Of course, soccer is a big deal. It's, a, it's, a, it's about a lot of money, 
but uh, I just went into, into hospitals as well to just uh, see people there and uh, to really get aware that, uh, that life is not just about soccer. So sometimes it helps to, to release some pressure. And uh, of course, you always have to have, to have your, your way. First of all, I would set up my, my goals. What is my goal? I wanted to play the whole, mm -hmm. the whole tournament. And then find ways how to achieve your goal mm -hmm. and then put it into action. Okay, so it wasn't there a moment that you just wanted to like just throw it away and just quit soccer for good and just become an ordinary person? I thought about that, but it was not an option, obviously. <laughs> so after one game, you can't just say, okay, I'm not playing anymore. Uh -huh. uh, I have to say, we also work with a, a psychiatrist in the, in the national team. He helps mm -hmm. a lot too, so he's always telling you, you know, okay, it was just one game. In soccer, it's, it's very nice. You have one game, a couple of days later, you have the next game. So yeah. either you win or lose, you have just one day to mourn or to, to just celebrate, and then the next game comes. And, uh, but for me, I think it's very important, no matter if it's startups or, or mm -hmm. as a soccer player, just set up your goal, this is the most important, then really find the way, how, how can you accomplish it, and then you have to put it into action. And the same is with Jogi Löw and Jürgen Klinsmann. They were the coaches in 2006, uh, mm -hmm. when, 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 they play, when they all blamed me for, for the first game. They just stick to the opinion to, to just let me play because they had a master plan. They, they thought, okay, that I'm the, the right person to, to, uh, to play. And uh, even if sometimes some pressure occurs, you just have to stick to it. It doesn't mean mm. that, you, that you can't just listen to, to, to some people's opinion. It's, it's very important too. But you just, so if just uh, pressure occurs, you can't just say, okay, now I'm not doing that anymore. You yourself became a team leader, so to speak. You're uh, a trainer now for the U18. Um, so how do you motivate your team now? I think if you have a goal and uh, the young players, they really have the goal to play Bundesliga or maybe become a national team player uh, one day, you don't really have to motivate them because uh, you want to achieve it. And so mm -hmm. we are just there to help them how to achieve it. And uh, this is uh, very important. Of course, um, I coach one of the best players or the best players under 18 in Germany, so it's not really hard to, uh, to motivate them, but it's all about the goals that you have in mind. Mm -hmm. You have a new goal on your mind. You have been uh, founding a foundation by your name, the Anne Friedrich Stiftung. And what is so really, really intriguing about this, you started this not just because of the hype that's going on these days with the refugee issue. You've been there all along. You've already like, took responsibility, took your fame in order to address these issues long time ago. So what made you like start this foundation? So I always thought about the idea to have my own foundation uh, at one point, but during my soccer career, it was not really, really easy because you have to deal with the pressure on, on, on the soccer field, whatever. And then after finishing my career, I just uh, decided to, to make an internship at the, at the Berlin Bürger Stiftung. It's a, it's a foundation in Berlin that uh, work with refugee children. And they, have a, they have a project that's, that's called, uh, or they, they just show uh, um, a picture book for children on, on the screen and explain them very easy, what's a tree and what, what, whatever. And I just joined it and thought about, okay, uh, we definitely need to help the refugees. And it was by but far early. But that was like a year ago or something. So yeah, so it's, it's, it was just uh, uh, right time. So it was uh, before the, the whole stuff started. And, uh, but I thought, okay, how can I reach out to as many, as many refugees as possible. So it's just like, okay, I could read the books to the, to the children, but it's just like 15 or 20 children. So we came up with the idea that uh, we use my asset, so as mm -hmm. a former uh, national team player, to reach out to German children in school because they, they know me and they, they definitely want to, to have projects with me. So I asked them to come together in a group. We, we uh, took six Germans together. We told them what it's about. Okay, what does it mean if you have to flee because of war? So we really tried to, to, to make that clear. And then in week two, so we had a seven-week seven pilot project, mm -hmm. um, we brought some, some refugee children too. So it's the same amount of Germans and refugee kids, and we worked with this group for seven weeks. And uh, we, we did some activities. I showed them the Olympic Stadium and told them about the background. We, we did a boat tour to, to, to show them the city, something about the city. So my wish is, and that's the, the name about it, it's VIF, so RIF in English, so it's a responsibility. German children mm -hmm. should take over responsibility and, the, and the, the parents too. We want to integrate the refugees and we want to build friendships because of that. 
So in uh, the seven weeks, they, they really went well. So in the beginning, the refugee kids were just one group, and the Germans, they were all shy, and I don't know, they didn't know what to do. But in the end of the seven weeks, uh, we, we definitely saw that they came together and that they in integrated somehow. And this is a big wish, and I think it's a good strategy to, to really reach as many people as possible, because if I go somewhere to just tell people something, okay, but if, if we can bring together children, and they are the future, and if we can implement that idea into their, their, their minds, then it's a great deal, I think. Yes, please. What I find so fascinating, you didn't just jump on a bandwagon because this is good PR for yourself. You did that like instantly, like out of nothing. There were, were no cameras, no nothing. You just had the urge. And you, I, I know that you've already engaged into organizations fighting uh, cystic fibrosis and, and, and other uh, um, diseases. Uh, what is that in you? Why, why do you feel the urge to, to do good? In, um, in society, even if it doesn't bring you anything. It's yeah. a matter of fact, you put money into that, like a lot of money. Yeah, I, I put a lot of money in that, but I wanted to leave something on, on this planet when I, when I die at some point, and everybody has to. So, uh, so my original idea is, okay, as soon as I'm not here anymore, I want to put my uh, the big, big amount of money into this foundation to, to keep this going for, for eternity. This was my original idea. But uh, for me, it's not about like putting myself somewhere, but uh, so there are so many wonderful foundations already. I just thought about the idea, okay, what do we need and what kind of help should we, should we offer? And now I think it's the right time to, to do something for uh, refugees. And the other project I have, it's, it's about heart disease and children. And I think it's, it helps you a lot as well as a, as a human being to really to really look around what's going on in, in the world, and just not to, to look at your stuff, what you're doing. That's amazing. I think you brought us a video, a little film or something that we can uh, Yeah, uh, I, show. I, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, a, a movie or a short movie about the, the pilot phase we did. So it's about the seven weeks. Uh, unfortunately, it's just like uh, a five week thing because the first two weeks we, we, we didn't record it on, on, on <laughs> tape, but oh. at least I put some subtitles under, under it so that, that we can watch it maybe now and that, okay. you, that you maybe find uh, or get to know what we're doing. Okay, let's roll the movie, please. WIF steht für Verantwortung, Integration und Freundschaft. Uh, unser Ziel ist es, den deutschen Kindern soziale Verantwortung zu vermitteln, den Flüchtlingskindern die Integration in Deutschland zu erleichtern und Freundschaften untereinander aufzubauen. Mir persönlich ist es ganz wichtig, den deutschen Kindern aufzuzeigen, was es heißt, für Flüchtlinge hier in dieses Land zu kommen. Das Gefühl, in ein Land zu kommen, in dem sie nicht wirklich von allen willkommen geheißen sind, stelle ich persönlich mir sehr, sehr schwierig vor. Ich möchte dabei helfen, Vorurteile oder auch Berührungsängste, die eventuell entstehen, zu verhindern oder zu vermeiden und eben so die Basis zu legen, Freundschaften untereinander aufzubauen. Also ich fand es ganz spannend, wie die Flüchtlingskinder so leben halt, also in so ähm, welchen Situationen und so, und, äh, dass sie halt, ähm, halt nicht so viel Auslauf haben. Und, also es hat mich sehr. Ich habe lange Zeit Fußball gespielt, professionell. Ich habe in der Bundesliga gespielt und auch in der Nationalmannschaft und ich kam in den Genuss, mit ganz vielen unterschiedlichen Nationalitäten zusammenzuspielen. Und ich persönlich kann sagen, dass es mir sehr, sehr viel geholfen hat. Ich habe sehr viel lernen dürfen über die Menschen, aber auch über die Kulturen. Und ich möchte nur jeden ermutigen, wirklich auch auf ausländische Mitbürger zuzugehen und äh, wirklich auch dabei zu helfen, Freundschaften untereinander aufzubauen, denn die sind am Ende sehr, sehr wertvoll. Ihr seid genauso wie wir. Ihr seid nette Leute und, naja, es bedeutet mir viel, weil... Es ist schön, sich für andere Leute einzusetzen, die jetzt, naja, halt nicht so viel von hier wissen. Am meisten gefreut hat mich, die lachenden Kinder zu sehen. Und gerade nach den sieben Wochen Pilotphase hat es mich wirklich beeindruckt, dass die Kinder wirklich untereinander sehr, sehr viel Spaß hatten, dass sie aufeinander zugegangen sind 
dass sie am Ende wirklich Freundschaften aufgebaut haben, dass es keine Grüppchenbildung mehr gab, wie es zu Beginn war, dass sämtliche Vorurteile oder eben auch Ängste abgebaut wurden und ähm, ja, dass es jetzt wirklich ein eingeschworener Haufen ist. Und das äh, hat mich persönlich am meisten gefreut und zeigt mir auch, dass wir auf dem richtigen Weg sind. Musik Wir haben es gerade gesehen, Arne, du hast äh, eine Webseite, Arne minus... Englische. Äh, äh. <lacht> Amazing. Um, so you have got, got a webpage, uh, Arne minus, uh, Friedrich minus Stiftung, DER.com, uh, works both ways. Um, so we have, a, we have a pack of like founders, developers, coders in here. So is there anything that these people can, can help you doing? So first of all, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's a wish to, to show the people what we are facing. So there's a lot of discussion about refugees coming into our country and uh, there's just one thing that is really certain. So because of the wars all around the world, there are more refugees coming into our country. Now it's on us, so how do we respond to it? What are we doing? And I think the only way is, first of all, we are all humans, we all, all have the same rights, we have to integrate them. And uh, I think we have a big chance with that. So we started just with one uh, group, but now we want to, to make it bigger, bigger. We want to spread it out, not just in Berlin, maybe, maybe in Germany. We talked to different cities already, but for that reason, of course, we need, uh, we need people who support us, of course, on one hand financially, but on the other hand, just like with a network. And uh, yeah, but it's on everybody's opinion, so what they think. I think it's a great, very great project, and we are working hard for that. And um, I'm just happy to, to present it here and to talk about the topic. Uh, so the message is clear. If you want to contact, if you want to help, if you want to engage, please contact Anna on his webpage. And um, maybe there's something that you want to like tell the people who m one day might become like big and like a big startup, a big company, and grow bigger with lots of money. With lots of uh, power comes great responsibility. So what is the message to the people that you want to share today with? the aspiring founders here in the, in the room. Okay, first of all, when you, when you start a startup, then uh, don't be afraid. There's always some pressure coming and uh, you definitely have to go through some valleys. Just go your way, so no matter what happens. And in the end, if you reach like, the peak and you really, really accomplish something, stay humble. I think this is very important too. I saw many great soccer players and uh, if you just look at them, the, the best players in the world are still humble and this is I think uh, a very important message to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Anne Friedrich. Yeah. Okay. Danke. Danke. Thank you. 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 Thank you.